All right, hi guys. So we are here today to show you the new British releases and I have with me Eddie C joining me today. So it is the long awaited British book as well as all the new toys. Yeah, I can't, I can't wait for it, you know. This stuff has been uh, much caught, caught for since uh, the launch of uh, World War Three Team Yankee. And uh, well, we, we know f for a long time that the British kids have been uh, undergone, uh, you know, a very uh, troubled history, but uh, finally they're here. And uh, you know what we're going to do today is we're going to open them up, and uh, we'll talk about uh, you know, all the all model kit itself. We'll, we'll do a comparison of how they are compared to the other tanks in the Team Yankee roster. And uh, at the end, you can take a look at the assembled kits and see how they look like. Yeah. So I think uh, it should be quite interesting. Uh, you know, the calls ever since Team Yankee started, and it's always a what-if scenario. It's the first time Battlefront is doing a, a historical um, war. So that also means that uh, everyone was wondering, you know, if there was a real conflict, wouldn't they have brought all the newer tanks out to fight as well? So I guess they finally answered the question by moving the timeline a little bit. So uh, we have the challenges. Uh, what else do we have in the box, Eddie? So we have the Warriors, which are a new addition. Uh, originally, they were built to replace the FV-432 and uh, you know, they, they were actually seen in Europe at some point in time. So, you, so they were uh, quite historical. Yeah, and I mean, I guess if World War Three did break out, they would have moved those timelines forward and they would have brought more expensive, newer tanks to the field. So uh, without further ado, uh, what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and we're going to do an unboxing. Uh, we're going to do an assembly uh, review and we're also going to go through how these tanks really compare up to the roster that we already have in Team Yankee. So, let's get to it. All right. Okay, rolling. Okay, guys. Uh, is that my pointing? Yeah, okay. <coughs> All right, guys. So, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Um, so, at the starter set, this is a British starter force. It actually comes with quite a lot of stuff. Um, Obviously, the new Challenger tanks are featured the most, so you've got five of those. Four Foxhounds, two Warriors, uh, you've got the new MLRS uh, rocket launchers, you have two Lynxes, two Scimitars, and two Chieftains. I think it's important to note that you're probably not going to make a full army out of what you get in the box. Um, if you get two boxes, you probably could, uh, but you're going to need you know, infantry. The Warriors are specifically infantry fighting vehicles, the IVFs, so you're going to need some infantry to go along with that, right? Um, so yeah, uh, that's what you see. And let's just go ahead and start opening and then we'll be able to see what exactly there is in here. Alright, so... This is a little bit of an ASMR feel here for everybody. Alright. Let's see what there is in here. Wow. <laughs> That's a lot. There's a lot of plastic sprues in there. That is a <laughs> lot of plastic sprues. Um, that is packed. And I see some green stuff down here. Uh, so normally they do color code the plastics to be with a certain nation. So I'm just wondering why this one looks a little bit... Um, okay, so you've got your uh, rule book. Oh, and, and tokens. And an acrylic token. Yeah. Let's see, I think that's... Oh, it's a minefield token. I don't even know if that's yeah. correct. Oh, it's for the, it's for the oh, MLRS. Oh, yes, yes, the MLRS can fire minelets. They've given you your back of cards, guys. They've given us... Um, some decals. Some decals. These are the normal British decals with your tank commanders, so that's pretty standard. Uh, you've got your A5 uh, rulebook. Uh, this came fresh from the factory, and it looks like it's. Uh, feel this, Eddie. I think I think they changed the material of the book cover. It's a little hmm. bit. The card stock is a little bit better. Yeah, it's, it's changed. It's, yeah, it's, it's not. It's a bit more semi-gloss, no? Yeah. So it's it's a little bit more hardy. Uh, there are no edging on the side, so that's nice. Probably a factor of it being t packed so tight inside that book over there. Um, let's go ahead and get to the good stuff. Uh, this, is this is the Chieftains. The plastic color has changed, I believe. 
Yeah, they're lighter. Yeah, they're a little bit light grey. So I would have thought these would be the newer ones. Uh, maybe they change supplier. Uh, you've got your Lynxes. So we'll get that out of the way. Nobody wants to see all this. This is all the old stuff. Where's the good stuff? Alright. Wait, uh, inside the what's next, is there, uh, this is the start here, which if you're a new player, you would see this as being the, uh, our penultimate guide, uh, per se, to what you have in here. Wow, okay. So it's, it's got a full spread of stuff here, which shows like um, the challengers, uh, the warriors, stuff like that. And then it's also got the British Armoured Squadron. Tells you about everything you've got in here. Uh, let's just flip to the back real quick. Normally they tell you, uh, ah, okay, so then they tell you what you have here and the points. And then on the next page, they'll tell you what to buy next. Uh, always a good step for a miniature company to tell you what to buy next. Um, they've got all the assembly guides here. Uh, we'll assemble uh, two challenges today and two warriors, and we'll assemble them exactly how they ask us to do it here. So we'll let you know whether these instructions are good to go, so to speak. Um, and let's take a look at some of the newer kits. Uh, so this is the, this is one. So the Challenger comes in a two sprue kit. This is the Challenger, right there. Let's half press this to zoom in. Uh, we can zoom in manually. So this is the turret piece for the Challenger. Um, back piece, uh, I believe this is... Is that the not, normal hull plates? Yeah, these are yeah. the normal hull plates. So this is for Challenger 1. Um, and uh, yeah, that's the first sprue. Then the second sprue over here, and this is not on the Chieftain hull. This is on a new Challenger hull. Uh, just eyeballing it right now, it looks really big. Uh, for scale, this is the um, the deep the better front what is it the better front yeah the better front shop what's yeah, it called yeah. it's called the like the mini mart or something the kiwi e mart yeah and and this 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 is how big this thing is it's wider it can't hide behind a building basically um, so this is lo quite long uh, suspension uh, for the challenger was supposed to be quite good so I suspect this is maybe a bit taller um, this is your Romo with its individual um, uh, it's individual uh, plates or applique plates, armor. Yeah, yeah. Applique armor. Um, yeah, that's yeah. Those are the hatches, and then you got the, the these is this is the extra armor for the glasses. Mm. Yeah. All right, so it's a fairly nice tank. Um, where's the? Oh, okay. Sorry, I missed it out over here. This is the barrel of the gun. Yeah, it looks exactly like the chieftain one. It's got those nice thermal sleeves to make sure it doesn't. It doesn't, you know, droop, doesn't droop. <laughs> um, and let's go now to the Warriors. I believe that is the next part of this. Also in a two-piece um, kit. It mm. looks like it could be in the same one. So if you get it, if you get this in um, a in the set box. Yeah, right? the set box with the five. They'll probably be in a single sprue. It doesn't look like they were supposed to be broken, so they just probably just snapped it off. Um, so this over here is the turret. It looks like it's a single piece turret, so it's very nice. Very easy to assemble. All you need to do is put on the bottom piece and then there's a magnet um, holder for you there. There's also a peg if you prefer to do it that way. Um, you've got your armor plates on the side, smoke launches, things like that. And then this is your hull. It doesn't look like there's a lot of... Okay, I... Hmm. So this is, this is the up armored version. And without the up armored version, you have a full detail side, so you just won't put these on. I'm guessing. Well, well, we'll go through it later. And then they have your plastic Milans over here, and of course the hull. So they've always done these uh, two notches and three notches, so you can't mix up the sides. Always good for idiots like me who get it wrong. And uh, I think the green bit is something that they're sharing. So this is uh, because the latest kit to come out uh, was the MLRS and this was actually an American uh, kit well on the box it's got American um, West, German. West German and British, British uh, flags so you can actually use it for all but I think they made it in the green plastic of the US um, so also a nice kit right? this is the first time have you seen this before? no yeah. so this is the first time it's a single kit 
um, looks like it's got not just the hull but the whole uh, bit over here whole side back and the front should be this piece over here and then it's got the launches and stuff like that all over the side looks quite nice can't complain um, we won't be building this today but you know we'll build it up uh, as we go along and I'm sure there'll be posters or um, people who post it up on Facebook after that and the Fox which everyone is talking about 32 points buys you how many of these Eddie? Well, you, it's more, more than you can count <laughs> <laughs> yeah they're yeah. cheaper than BMPs and they fire the 30mm uh, gun so it's it's pretty good um, look like they're very very compact kits uh, none of those irritating uh, lead wheels that they used to give us. So all plastic, all in a single kit. Looks like you can put this together in maybe five, ten minutes max. Yeah. Any comments in your end? No, it looked like a very uh, well-designed kit this time around. Um, you know, they, they learned a lot of lessons from the previous uh, kits put out by uh, Battlefront. And I think, uh, you know, all these experiences have been put to good use. You know, there's a lot of detail. And you don't, and of course, you know, for the warrior, you still have, uh, you still have little bits like the, like the smoke launchers and all. But uh, all in all, you know, they're not as, uh, not as infamous as the old uh, T seventy two or the, or the BMP two kit, which had some uh, issues with the smoke launchers. But uh, this this one should should be out quite nicely. Okay. This this one the instruction manual issues. What? Because okay, you're supposed to put this, this part. They don't show you where it's supposed before to be. Before the no, before you put on the upper hull. Because once you put on the upper hull, right, this overhang it gets in the way of placing it. Ah, I see. I see yeah. So this side, this this side, foresee will be uh, <laughs> there will be a nasty surprise to many people. What comments do you have, Eddie? Uh, well, um, these are very fantastic kits. Uh, in particular, the Warrior is, uh, is a very, very beautiful kit. Uh, the side skirts might give a little bit of problems to newer, to new players and new models, but uh, otherwise, uh, there shouldn't be any real issues with uh, construction. And uh, you know, within uh, one night of assembly, you should have a full force of uh, challengers and warriors up for play. Mm -hmm. So the challenge is one of those interesting tanks. Um, like I said, I don't know a lot about the history of all these things, but uh, when I was building them, I kind of read up a little bit. Uh, they were actually not made for the British Army, they were made for the Shah of uh, Iran. And then with the fall of the Shah, then they decided to... Um, the British Army took over the project. Yeah, they, they went ahead and they, they ordered the first batch of uh, 234 challenges uh, you know, for the British Army, because uh, they foresaw that it would be uh, valuable investment for the future you know they got a brand new tank out of it and uh, you know it was uh, down payment was paid for yeah, by the shah paid, so paid for anyway that so, doesn't hurt yeah. <laughs> somebody else is paying for your war yeah and then uh, you know it, it turned out to be a very uh, valid investment because um, you know the challenger was uh, criticized for a lot of flaws but uh, during the gulf war um, it uh, silenced a lot of critics with uh, very uh, outstanding performance it's got such a low profile for its turret it's it's almost like they're following the Russian design of oh, of very very that, low, yeah. and but it's still it's still beefy though. But it's 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 a nice tank. It's a nice tank. So um, yeah, how about gameplay? How do you think this is gonna? How do you think the moving era is going to change the gameplay? Well, I, I in my previous articles that I wrote for Blitz and Pieces, I spoke about at length about uh, how the increased front armor of the Challenger would change the game, and uh, you know. We've seen also in some better reports that uh, how, how the Challenger performs is roughly analogous to the King Tiger in Flames of War. 
in the previous edition. You know, if you take too little, um, it wouldn't have too much of an impact because at the end of the day, um, it still puts out as much firepower as any other NATO MBT. Uh, but um, given that you can run up to seven challenges in uh, in hundred point force, uh, this will be quite instrumental. Uh, the only thing you have to fear. Uh, anti tank helicopters as well as strike aircraft but other than that you are frontally immune to everything else and you know with some brave moves and a lot of uh, a lot of you can, you, yeah. you can go through <laughs> you, can, you, you can assault enemy positions very quickly uh, it's clearly built to be both an offensive and uh, defensive tank <laughs> the normal challenger uh, without the upgrade is uh, probably better in the, in the offensive role uh, because of a better, a much better cross rating, and uh, you know, one point of armor doesn't make a difference because you are all, you are already vulnerable to flanking shots. Um, the Romo is uh, pretty much a very defensive tank. You know, if it's sitting in a corner or on a hill, um, you're not going to have much luck getting through to it. The um, now that you mentioned the uh, assault, I just wanted to check something real quick. And the Challenger has an assault rating of three plus. It is as good as British Irish infantry assaulting a position. This 62 ton tank can run over Russians as well as the four. <laughs> How does this make sense? Why, why is their assault rating 3 plus? Oh, it's, uh, it's the chosen nation, as you can see. <laughs> <laughs> but not every. Uh, even the warriors are no the warriors are assault four. The the warriors are assault four, but when it gets heavier and it's the up armored warrior, it's also three plus. Yeah, so you know, uh, if you build your army around uh, decisive assault, right? You know, you have up armored warriors, and you have the uh, the challengers in a very small but very very elite force, right? It's possible to simply overrun enemy positions in one to two turns, and you know that's decisive to winning games. Yes, I guess uh, yeah. faction uh, choice is very important. Goodness, that's amazing. Three plus. Yeah. So there's, right. there's a lot of talk about uh, how these guys will get outnumbered and flanked by T-55s and uh, T-72s or you know, get shot by strike aircraft. But uh, the, the crux of the matter is that if you can't kill them in time, uh, they're going to wipe out the rest of your army. So it's, uh, I'll say it's, uh, it's up in the air, you know, you have to do a bit of playtesting for yourself to uh, see how it pans out. But my belief is that uh, the challengers will see a lot of game time on the table, because, which is great because they're a really nice model. And uh, although the, the shade of plastic is, is, is something different, but uh, many, people will put it, um, many people will put it to use very soon. Okay. Yeah. So thanks for watching guys, this is our unboxing of the British Starter Force. There's a whole bunch of new pieces and new products out for the British. Uh, the Warrior Kits, the Challenger Kits, uh, Foxes, LRS, they're all there. Uh, you can find them on blitzminis.com and thanks Eddie for turning up and helping to show us how you should assemble a tank and I showed you how you shouldn't assemble a tank. Uh, so thanks. Alright, thank you very much. We'll thanks. see you next time. See you guys.